Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Kraus. Still coming to you from the undisclosed Bumble location. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. Actually, I do know how long I'm going to be here, just another couple days. But I'm here. I have managed to uh, procure all the equipment needed to still continue to bring you the Bumblecast. And uh, boy, do we have a lot of Bumblecast. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot. You guys ask a lot of questions, you know that? Well, that's a good thing, because we have a lot to answer. Okay, well, th- then let's get started. Yes. Yes. This episode, all the questions come to us courtesy of our supporters over on Patreon at patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, our YouTube members, and... We've also got a few YouTube super chats in here. A little bit of uh, catch up from our live stream. Because so many of you were just so generous, we didn't have enough time to get through them all. <laughs> so here we go. We're starting off with this one from Aiden7479. This might be asking you to dig deep, but how much of the information in the Archie Sonic Encyclopedia was stuff created by previous writers, just never saw mentioned in the comic? And how much did you have to come up with yourself to fill in the blanks? For example, was the lore behind Enerjack your creation or a previous writer's? Uh, ninety, I'd say ninety nine percent was me, um, picking up on loose ends and what seemed to be clear directions on stuff and just tying it all together. Um, the Enerjack thing was mine. Um, stuff like Sherman being Rotor's father. That was never officially stated anywhere, but come on. A, a, a pilot, purple walrus in the kingdom, and Rotor's dad is missing from the narrative. It it fits. It, it Come on now. Uh, the There wasn't really any behind-the-scenes material for me to use. Uh, usually when a writer left the team, that was it. Now, like, Carl Bowlers, I remember, posted a bunch of concepts of his after he left the book, but that was like public material, or he released that publicly, I should say, and that's different, I think. Like, that that's after the fact he wasn't part of the team. It Its usability was dubious, but then stuff like, I distinctly remember Remington being Craig Ock's son was revealed by Ken Penders on his forum way back in the day when he was still writing the books that was never revealed in the material but you know i figured he was writing at the time it was hinted at but it was never like straight up said so pick up that thread go by word of god and you know make it official official but and if you couldn't hear that was Aaliyah correcting me in the background because her memory is like a steel trap mine is like one full of mice um but the encyclopedia itself was from what I remember, mostly me filling in blanks on my own, but using the material that was there as the, the guiding post for that, like the whole knuckles family tree that came off of official material, just, you know, fill in the blanks. I mean, the previous writer has come out and said that, uh, he was open to, uh, sharing his plans but uh yeah i think there were external circumstances involved that probably prevented that so here's this one from alan c i've seen every moment where hero goes through a corruption and redemption story arc like mecha sally and enerjack knuckles from archie how do you think it would be like with sonic and tails in idw i feel like we've seen it through sonic in a variety of ways like, that was what Scourge was. He was the corruption of Sonic, at least his, his principles and ideals. Um, many of the other characters and, you know, rivals to him are studies of that. And I kind of like Sonic as just this pure, virtuous, so simple, but it's elegant that way, that I don't want to see him get corrupted. It feels... Like the antithesis of what he is, corrupted again. I mean, I, I don't wouldn't be the first time. I, yeah, I don't immediately see what we could do with that that would be interesting or different that hasn't already been done through another avenue. 
right you know yeah um tails i don't know i kind of feel like it's already walking along the same path that nine is taking in prime potentially um but i don't want to speculate on that further because you know prime isn't done yet Mm -hmm. that also seems to be like the go-to one for a lot of folks is you know here's this nice solid kinship this uh positive bond between two characters and they have their rocky point sure but it is usually something of goodness and light and how can we make that bad and i understand the appeal i absolutely do but i don't know maybe it's me in my old age i just can we have a nice thing just just a nice thing can we just have it be nice can no we just, it can be tested sure but can we just have a nice thing no ian we can't have nice things Miss, I know I'm you, saying that as the guy who did the Mecha Sally and Energy Knuckles thing. You, I realize the hypocrisy. I do. You you must suffer as as we do. We all suffer under your pen, so you too must suffer. <laughs> it's only fair. With Tails, at least, I mean, it, if we're going to ignore Nine and that spin on it, you know, you could maybe follow a path with Tails, especially coming out of Frontiers, where he feels like he has to forge his own idea identity and he is the smartest guy in the room and he does have considerable skill. So maybe it does kind of go to his head and he thinks he is right and kind of pulls a Reed Richards type of thing and wants to, he thinks he's doing the right thing, but as the saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Maybe that would be a way you could do a corruption arc with him without betraying everything that is tails. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I want to do that, you know, like let him have a successful heroic arc or at the very least, let him try and fail, but learn, but learn from it. Can we have the nice thing? I mean, uh, maybe I'm kind of gun shy after metal virus, like metal virus was just bad time for everyone. (laughs) It's like, okay, we, we, we've, we've had the absolute bad time. Let's have some, some good times adventure still challenge sure but happy good times smiley times uh no everyone must suffer suffer here's one from ralph Lamont or you can it's role swapping time how differently would search handle things if she ended up in the no zone prison and how would it scourge react to finding out he was created specifically to replace sonic well the second half first that basically is scourge's arc he wasn't you know, directly manufactured, but on a cosmic level, that is his identity. The anti-universe was born as an antithesis to the prime universe. So his existence, his very nature, his point of being is to be counter to Sonic. And that's where that's his primary hang up is you know, he has no identity outside of he is evil Sonic, which leads to all sorts of bad decisions. Now, for Surge, if it's just her in zone jail, she's in trouble because part of what got Scourge out of it was listening to Fiona and swallowing his pride long enough to get the rest of the gang to unify with him. Without that voice of reason, without someone to help guide her and temper her anger, Surge would just be raging against the machine 24-7. Like, if she was in the same cell as Smalls, she would soon be, you know, by herself in that cell. Rest in peace, Smalls. But, you know, otherwise, I don't see her able to break out on just her own. You know, Scourge needed support. Scourge needed the team to help him do. Surge by herself is not going to be able to achieve the same thing. So then what would happen? (laughs) <laughs> she'd just be she'd be locked in jail she'd just probably be moved to solitary because you couldn't just... keep her with anybody else <laughs> yeah well maybe kit would break her out you know if he i mean if he didn't get them water with tendrils her. with them water tendrils it doesn't really matter which direction up is now is it exactly here's a question from andrew d if we ever got all of the Mega Man issues printed in graphic novels would you have any idea what the final one would have been Considering the previews for the unreleased ones, I'm assuming it would have probably included issues 49 and 53 to 55. Which covers do you think would have been used, and what do you think it would have been called? It's a shame we never got one final cover art to see what could have been. I'm a little confused if 
talking about what was printed was, you know, in the graphic novels, the last one would be the last story arc. I think he's wondering which, uh, because I think the crossover was happening at that time. The last crossover, I yeah, guess. Yeah, but we still had a few issues after that, because that's where we got our... So, and that's, 50, yeah, 53 wow. to 55 is the three that were after the after Worlds Unite, and then 49, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and then 49, yeah, so clearly that would be the final volume, and if my math is right, that would have been volume 12. Yeah. Um, that, that is if my math is right, and that's a big if. Mm. Oh. Uh, I would imagine it would be Ryan Jampol's Rock Band cover, because that freaking rocked. Man, and that's a really great cover, and uh, I don't know, probably title it something bittersweet and you know, gut wrenching, uh, or not cancel it, or put it on hiatus, coming back mm-hmm. any minute now, mm-hmm. just like Mega Man 12 and Mega Man X9 and Legends 3. And to be a Mega Man fan is apparently pain, who do? Here's a question from Ann Tales. Scrapnik Island number four spoilers. Do you think Sega allowed Sonic to cry out of a technicality? Or do you think they're loosening up on their rule concerning Sonic expressing this form of emotion? Either way, I'd love to see the boy put through angsty, angsty situations that bring out the tears. Or even happy scenarios that make him shed tears of joy like what we saw at the end of Scrapnik Island. Make it happy, Ian. Also, I want to clarify, I did shorten this question down a little bit, but Antails did mention that uh, it technically was not Sonic crying. Right. Technically. I mean, physically, yes, but it was not his emotional response. Technically, yes. And, I mean, maybe that was a technicality? I don't know. Everything about Scrapnik Island would have never gotten off the ground in the Archie days, so what do I know? <laughs> um, I'm personally not eager to have Sonic turn on the waterworks all the time because that's just not who he is. He's not a, you know, character of extreme emotions. He usually plays it cool. It, you know, whether it's joy or sadness or anger, it's usually reserved to a degree. He's not going to be, you know, flinging swear words or getting all googly eye puppy love or bawling his eyes out. It's that's just not who he is. That isn't to say he can't emote, and we certainly have gotten a lot more latitude than that since the old days. But big old weepy boo-hoo, eh, that doesn't seem like Sonic to me. Well, I mean, he he gets, like, excited. That's like, he, he he's kind of, like, into stuff, yeah, but you know. Exuberant joy, I think, is a kind of a different classification. <laughs> also, he should fling swear words, damn it. <laughs> According to YouTube, but then what would Shadow do? Yeah, well, according to YouTube, damn is not a swear anymore. So, really? Yep. Huh. About mm-hmm. damn time. <laughs> well, I mean, we've been using them for decades to dam up rivers. So, I mean, I don't know why they were a swear to begin with. Mm. Here's one from Mastrono. How do you believe that Black Doom came to gain mastery of the Chaos Emeralds? I have no idea. Um, the whole thing about the ancients coming back with them from their world through any headcanon I had out the window. So, uh, I mean, it's certainly something that I would love to explore, but that is some like super deep cosmic background lore stuff that I don't see us getting to anytime soon, especially since, you know, black doom is dead and the black arms are, gone they'd have to come back first to make that even relevant Mm. well i guess you know what to do (laughs) i'm just saying i know one person who would be really happy to see black doom in the black arms again just one i but i know i know (laughs) hey you know they're out there (laughs) everybody's a fan of something (laughs) for what it's worth i think they could be used as a nice third faction you know, some boogeymen that aren't just robots again. Yeah. You know, evil space aliens. That's a nice, simple antagonistic force. <laughs> it's like the uh, Triceratons and TMNT, you know? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, here's this one from Ozjam. Do you think a character having a crush on another character diminishes them? Or do you think it's just another aspect of their character? 
while also having another role that is not related to that crush. I apologize for bringing something that involves shipping, regardless of the series. We're we're talking large narrative constructs. We're not talking about a particular title or pairing, right? Sure, right. sure. I, I I admit I did shorten this one down too because it was a bit long. But uh, they were talking about My Hero Academia uh, originally a oh. bit, but they did. Well, they, that was just one of one example they gave. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I know exactly what they were talking about. But regardless, <laughs> um, having romantic feelings for another character does not necessarily diminish them. No, it does when that becomes their identity, when it becomes their singular motivator, their singular thought, the only driving force to the character. Then it's sad. They need more than that. Unless that's your point. Like if you're trying to focus on that character's obsession and you're using that as a vehicle to further understand what a good relationship is, who this character is, why they're having this fixation, why they can't see beyond their personal armor's tunnel vision. Now that could be utilized, but I don't think that's what you're asking about. If it's just a character likes another character, that's an aspect of them. And that's fine. Yes. You know, do something about it. You know, do, how does that affect their dynamic? Are is there awkwardness between them? Do they understand each other's needs? You know, how does the one character go about it? Do they not go about it? What are you doing with it? And how does that feed into the personal character's growth and into your greater narrative? It is a facet that can be good. It can be bad. It's just what you use it for. Mm-hmm. If it's all it is, and that's one note. Oh. I like the boy. Then, yeah, that's that's no good. <laughs> that's no good. Well, I mean, does having a crush or being attracted to somebody in real life uh, diminish you as a person? Probably not. I'd hope not. So if you want your characters to be believable and well-rounded, it kind of makes sense for maybe at least some of them to have an interest in other characters as well. So, yeah. It's all just part of, I think, building a believable, well-rounded character that's, uh, you know, not flat. Here's one from Axis. It's pretty clear Sega doesn't want any canon romantic relationships in the Sonic games, but how do you feel about the option to date other characters in side quests? This is a feature a lot of RPGs have, like uh, Persona and The Witcher series. In Sonic's case, he could go on individual side quests with other characters with the option to romance some of them, like Amy and Blaze. This... And this would be entirely optional and non-canon. I think this feature could please and appease the shipping community, but what are your thoughts on this idea? No, it would not appe- please and appease anybody. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I don't want to crap on your idea. <laughs> I appreciate the thought, but I don't, I don't know if it would help. <laughs> Back to that, you know, road to hell, good intentions, paving, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. You know, I, I, I appreciate the thought and the attempt to find a way to make everybody happy. So kudos to you for that. But I see the exact opposite happening because something like the persona games, not that I'm familiar with them, but each title is standalone. Correct. From my understanding. Yes. And your romance options are to, would be within the confines of that story. You, you hook up a couple characters. That is the story that you have, uh, f- crafted for yourself, and that is your in- your engagement. That's what you have chosen to do, and that's what you enjoy. Uh, the Witcher series, uh, I'm not familiar with that one as much either, but it is focusing on one character and his journey, and I don't know if any romance options carry on between titles, or like if, if it was like in Mass Effect, where, you know, they really had to figure out what would happen if certain characters didn't show up between sequels and where they were and how those mini spinning plates could come about. So with Sonic, it's even worse because there is no end. No. Sonic is going to keep going perpetually open-ended as far as I know. So if you were to have a singular title with the option to romance various directions, if you're treating it as non-canon, then what's the point? Like you are just doing something menial off to the side that will have no bearing on the future of the game. You know, you went to this trouble 
to craft something for yourself. And then the next game, it doesn't matter. It's not there. And to me, and I would imagine most folks, that would be very unsatisfying. Even going in knowing full well, like if it said on the front of the box, you know, romance your own character, but this won't stick. It's still like a question of why. Mm -hmm. With the Persona games, it's because that's the story you want to tell for yourself. That's the direction you want it to go. You're done. With The Witcher, it's where you're taking this character within his saga, and then you're done. Mass Effect, it's who you're romancing to the end, and you're done. Sonic, it's not done. Sonic will always be. And I feel like if you gave that option in there, there would be just more fuel on the fire. Folks arguing whether or not each individual path was crafted with equal attention or validity. Mm -hmm. Folks arguing which one makes more sense and which one feels more right. If there is anything referencing even a smidgen of any of the paths in a future title, arguments over which path is actually canonical because of this little iota of ma info that matches up. No, 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 no. Mm. I, it, I understand your thinking. I, I think it would just make things infinitely worse. I appreciate the thought and the idea, Axis. We're not meaning to... It's not you. You're not the problem. You're trying, and we appreciate that. <laughs> it's everyone else who uh, we are concerned about. But uh, this reminds me of Final Fantasy VII, which is, you know... Well, it was, at the time, a standalone game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still, I'm I'm thinking of, like... There's uh, at least two characters that you can go on a date with in that game that are kind of jokey dates. Mm -hmm. And they're very funny and they're well done, but I can imagine that uh, certain people would feel a bit slighted that their ship is reduced to a joke in mm -hmm. Sonic. So, yeah, I don't think we're even going to get things like Sonic and Shadow going on a date and being very yeah. awkward the whole time and playing it for laughs. And I don't think that's going to happen, guys. I'm sorry. I know. I know you want it to happen. I know. You just have to write it in your fanfics. I mean, Sonic 06 kind of toyed with that idea where you have the choice of saying Sonic's one true love was Amy or Elise. <sighs> But that choice didn't matter because in the end, it's still Elise who revives Sonic with true love's kiss. And Amy is a non-factor, regardless of your choice. And that still gets brought up here and there on the validity of the choice or what have you. Whether or not you get to you choose to go on a date with Amy in Unleashed is brought up as well. And that one is a little less of a problem just because you can make the choice multiple times. So it clearly has no ongoing bearing and it has no follow-up. You know, if they didn't go on a date, they didn't go on a date. If they go did go on a date, it was just the once and the world continues to turn. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Romantic options, unless that becomes like part of a larger game plan with the Sonic narrative, I think it's not a good idea. Yeah. Nope. All right, here's a question from Batman69. Lol. Ian, if you were told by the higher-ups to write an ongoing spin-off book of Team Forgotten, that's Mighty, Ray, Honey, and Sticks, besides the fact that those have to be your main characters of the book, you would be given complete free reign. Who would be their main bad guy? How do you think the characters would play off of each other? Which universe would you set it in? IDW, Classic, Boom, Create a New One, etc. Um... Funny you say this, because like, right as we're recording this, Toyota-san on Twitter was uh, talking about Sticks, and you know, the official Japanese channel was reposting her profile from Sonic Channel, and Toyota-san saying he'd like to see it in the comics one day. It's like, <clears throat> I'm going to screen cap this and use this in the next round Do of it. pitching a story with Sticks. Do it! For pity's sake. Do it! Uh, yes! So yes! That, that, I think that's encouraging. Yes, personally. Yes. <laughs> uh, I would set it modern Sonic because that's where Styx is right now. Boom has been retired. Uh, Mighty Ray and Mighty... Honey are not in modern, though, so... Right, they're classic, but classic is the past. That just means we get 
you know, modern day versions of them. Oh, uh, finally. Yeah. I mean, to be fair. Yeah. Okay. Like if sticks is the excuse to modernize mighty Ray and honey. Yeah, sure. I'll take it. <laughs> Punch that ticket. I'll ride that train. Well, I mean, you're the one who's always like, eh, I kind of like having the cast be separate, but here we are. As soon as, as soon do. as, as I, soon as you're I given, the... as soon as you're given the potential chance, here we are. <laughs> I see the virtues of both. I get know? it. I do. I do too. <laughs> if classic works as a separate cast, okay. I see the good in that. If we get more toys to play with in modern, I ain't going to shed a tear. It's fine. It's win win. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So let's see. A, a group dynamic like that, Mighty's going to be the foundation, clearly. He's laid back. He's got the level head. He can keep things on track mostly. Yeah. Ray's his buddy boy. Ray's going to be there to support him. Honey, if we're going off of the old Archie characterization, which, you know, why not? We'll run with it for now. She's a bit more vivacious. She might be kind of trying to lead the group in one direction over another, but she's not an idiot. So it's not like it's going to lead to terrible antics, but she might be the one to provide the narrative spark, the impetus, if you will. She is a sassy then, businesswoman, so she knows what yeah. she's doing. <laughs> then she and Mighty are fighting bros. Well, obviously. <laughs> They're sparring buddies. Yeah. And then Styx. Styx is the wild card. She is the chaotic good in the group. She is the one who finds the scooperific mystery that they need to investigate. She is the one who thinks one of them is the secret cyborg alien clone, and they have to disprove that. She is the one who figures that, you know, there is some kind of hidden mystery under that bunker hill. And they're like, no, it's totally fine. But we'll look at it just because you're paranoid. Oh, wait, no, you were right. And, you know, if <laughs> Honey isn't leading them into action, Styx is going to be the one that gets them to do something because mm -hmm. it's more fun that way. <laughs> or it's a matter of getting Styx out of trouble, which is also entirely fun. So uh, 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 this is from our our chat. Uh, it says, "I for one am very excited for it's always sunny in Green Hill Zone." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I offer you a boomerang in these trying times. <laughs> so anyway, I started punching. <laughs> As for central villain, hmm, hmm. I mean, the knee-jerk reaction is to say the hooligans, just because, you know, if we're going with Team Lost and Forgotten, they kind of qualify, too. But they're they're not, like, antagonists. They're not they're not central antagonists. They're mooks. Yeah. They're instigators. They're they're your your opening act. It's tempting to say the battle birds, just because they're the most established and truly powerful group in my mind. But that's kind of Tails' group. I'd feel really bad, you know, bringing them back and not giving them to Tails. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe create something new. Give them their own enemy to fight. Or, you know, while we're revitalizing stuff, maybe retool Lyric into something that's actually interesting and fun and menacing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, hey, if you can make the people, some people at least, like the Deadly Six, maybe you can make people like Lyric. I mean, personally, I think Lyric would be a great Knuckles villain, but that is a whole other mm -hmm. tangent. Yeah. Maybe it could be Dave. <laughs> <laughs> if we're bringing in boom stuff, here we go. Dave the intern sweep. Yep, here we go. <laughs> yes, he does sweep. That's part of his job. All right, here's one from Ben R. What would happen if Deadpool and Styx met? What would their dynamic be, and who would tear the biggest hole in the fourth wall? I think they would be like beating each other, trying to be the first ones to climb through it. <laughs> I think Deadpool would be the first to break the fourth wall, but Styx would be the would readily see the hole in the fourth wall. She knew that they, the people were watching her. She just didn't realize it was that many. Don't <laughs> turn the page. Don't try to ignore me. You can't silence me. And it's just like page after page of her yelling at the reader. <laughs> yes. And then she jumps I mean, out and starts tearing, tearing at the artist and the writer. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. I imagine they'd get along. Like, Deadpool's no stranger to 
various crazy things. Nah. A talking badger is not the strangest thing that has come across his plate. I mean, he's dealt with a talking raccoon. <laughs> it's... And, you know, the minute he starts revealing the greater uh, fourth wall breaking truths, Styx is going to be on his side. He's revealing the truth. She's all for it. They're going to tear down this entire construct until it comes down to the fact of they would actually be destroying the book that you are reading and thus end their own reality. And she realizes that, no, okay. She understands now why the rest of the sheep will turn a blind eye. It's just so that the world turns on, or at least that the page turns. <laughs> she'll ignore them for now. For now. For now. But she'll always and then be they go there. Get chimichangas. Ah, chimichanga. She'll always be there, though. She'll be there with a hashtag knowing smile. Oh, yeah. She knows how to watch out for him now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and our last question is not a question, but it's from Big Shoes. Please tell me Styx is on the way to the IDW comics. Not in the immediate future, but by dingy, I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> Go back a couple questions and uh, you'll, 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 there's some, there's some uh, interesting news, intriguing news. I'm ready. So I'm also ready for a break. Let's take a quick break and then come back with more on the Bumblecast. We're back. We got a question from Chaos Sonic 1. Long time ago, you said there was a reason for male hedgehogs for Super. Has that changed or the same? And no, I am not asking what it is. I don't think I said that. Or if I did, that's a flub on my part. Uh, there's no reason that I'm aware of. It's because they're male hedgehogs. That's, I guess, the reason. Yeah. It's a dumb reason. I don't like it. No, sir. Mm -mm. I don't yep. like it. Yep. Mm -mm. It's a bad excuse. Here's a question from Conga. Even though Patrick and the Knuckles clan conquered many other tribes of Echidna, I doubt they were thorough enough before they awakened chaos. Would it be reasonable to assume that there are theoretically other groups of Echidna, as in not the Nocturnus, who survived or separated from the Knuckle cl Knuckles clan and perhaps survived until the present day? Now... Don't take this as official word. This is my head cannon here. But to me, it makes sense that there was at least two active tribes of echidnas. We know the Knuckles tribe was based out of the Mystic Ruins jungle. We've been there. We've seen it. It's there. But we know that another group built the very Egyptian themed pyramids, which was all in like SA2. So they're very, very different architectural styles, very different regions of the world. Unless Pachacamacadama had, you know, <laughs> cells all over the world, it, that doesn't make sense to me, especially with such low-grade technology. To me, there it makes sense that there's, like, two, at least two Echidna tribes out there. What happened to the other ones? Yeah, I don't know. It's been however many hundreds, if not thousands of years. Time passed, but... It, it only makes sense to me that there were at least two. Well, I guess as long as you don't call him Pachacamalama Ding Dong, then I think we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't do that. Here's a question from Domino. I want to jump on the random crossover train, so here's a bizarre one for you both. Sonic and crew somehow find themselves in the world of the Walking Dead. How does that play out? I'm going to say it plays out like the metal virus, but with permanence. <laughs> pretty much <laughs> i mean i'm just gonna throw that out there i don't know if you have any other thoughts ian but <laughs> i mean the stakes are a bit higher you know sonic's fast enough to not really get grabbed by the zombies but you know the whole point was that he got infected the first time because he was reckless and didn't understand who, what he was jumping into quite literally mm -hmm. so all he, he's got to do is get one bite and then well this is assuming there were, I haven't actually seen Walking Dead. I don't know how their zombie rules work, but. I think they're fairly standard, but they have, do they, I th do they have fast zombies? I think they have, yeah, they work, they do bites mostly. And okay, I'm being told that they do not have fast zombies. Okay. Okay. So all it takes is for Sonic to let his guard down once and get bit. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you can debate on whether or not the speed cures the zombie virus the same as metal virus, but uh, <laughs> if it don't, 
then you're going to have the fastest of fast zombies after a bit. <laughs> and uh, Well, I'm being told one bite is a death sentence outside of amputating the limb. I'm also being told okay. Walking Dead is more about how the people are the real monsters. Well, that's kind yeah. of what I think what zombie zombie media in general is kind of about to be fair yeah 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 yes but you know everyone in sonic's world is good people so there goes that out the window well, how dare you are you forgetting eggman rough and tumble hello <laughs> yeah but then that's no different than any regular sonic story star starlight wait no like he not him yeah don't worry about him if rough and tumble aren't patient zero then they've stockpiled a warehouse and they're, you know, king of the world. You want to <laughs> get into their stronghold and get away from the zombie apocalypse? You got to, you know, swear fealty, pay up. Yeah, pretty much. They don't actually ration anything cuz they're idiots, so they eventually run out of supplies and, you know, get eat, but mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, shadow blowing up corpses left, right and center. Beans. Omega attaches a chainsaw to one arm just for the heck of it. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Mhm. New designation, groovy. <laughs> okay, okay. I think this is worth it. Yeah. And I'm also being told that Rough and Tumble would be standard uh, Walking Dead villains. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> and you got folks trying to flee to the one place where the zombies can't get, which is in a, like, floating landmass. Mm-hmm. Knuckles isn't happy with all these people crowding up his island until the one infected who you know comes in with the refugees starts getting everybody. Is this just assuming that the floating island gets tra- or the Angel Island gets transported along with all those the Sonic characters into the Walking yeah, Dead? We're, we're working on what, yeah, yeah. We're saying the virus ha- happens on Sonic's Earth. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. This if you is trying not... to flee to Lost. Okay, yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about Walking Hex, Dead then... really, so. The deadly six are hunting you down to throw you off Lost Hex. Mm-hmm. They don't care. Sink or swim. I blame the birds, even though there are no birds, only flickies. Just can... keeping the Babylon Rogues blimp flying as long as it can because they can't really sit down to refuel anywhere. There's zombies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't Everybody's know. Everybody's holding out, waiting for Little Planet to come back. Oh, if we can just come back, we can get the time stones and reverse things, or at the very least, ride it off into the sunset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then something goes wrong and you get time zombies <laughs> oh no oh no that's what that's... it is they get the, the last survivors gather the time zones to try to undo the plague but something goes wrong and a single zombie gets thrown back to before it starts and that's the patient zero oh, yeah, stable yeah. time loop can't escape it oh. everyone's doomed forever now you've done it now you've done it Ah, it's the birds. It's always the birds, especially the Negan flightless has the ones. World's most messed up wispon. Who? What? Negan. Oh yeah. <laughs> the wisp in that wispon bed is really messed up. <laughs> wow! Wow! Oh man, <laughs> this is kind of silly. Uh, it's almost like all zombie media is kind of silly. Here's one from Dove. Ian, after all this time, all these years, all the battles, all the defeats, and all the humiliation, why doesn't Eggman make a Metal Tails to assist Metal Sonic? I mean, even Starline figured that out first thing. So why, why can't Eggman figure out that Metal needs a friend? Maybe that's the ultimate insult. Metal is not a friend. Metal is a tool to be used. (laughs) Besides that. Yes. You know. Metal is a weapon. In classic era... You know, you have cute little cuddly tails. He gets cute little cuddly tails doll. Yeah. In modern, you don't get nothing. I ain't got to build nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> get your validation somewhere else, kid. <laughs> uh, wow. He's really, uh, he's really just forgotten about metal after Sage came into his life, huh? What? <laughs> uh, so... You're saying the Tails doll is stuck in classic? It ain't coming through? It ain't gonna come into modern? Ah, uh, I don't know. Eh. Oh, well. Probably not. Well, we'll just have to see. Mm. Well, hey, you know, at least T-Pup is on the table-ish. Not quite T-Pup, but, you know. I am surprised that got referenced again. But yeah. again, yeah, makes me hopeful. Yep, yep. Looks pretty cool. 
Here's one from El Technopata. Some crossover ideas. How would they go? Sonic and Alien versus Predator. Sonic and JoJo. Sonic and Fallout. Sonic and Irma. And Sonic and Smiling Friends. I honestly don't know what a few of these are. Namely, Irma and Smiling Friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel out of the loop. Let's see. Sonic and Alien versus Predator. He has to hit the Xenomorph super fast because he can crack that exoskeleton, but he has to be fast enough to bounce away before the acid hits him. And the Predator wants the ultimate prey, but Sonic's too fast and it turns into a bug, Bugs Bunny routine with more sharp objects. Um, Sonic and JoJo. I'll go for the low-hanging fruit. Dutch angle. Super Sonic is approaching the Death Egg robot. Oh, you're approaching me? That's the only way I can kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh sonic and fallout sonic goes around opening all the vaults to let all the little animals out uh, sonic and irma i have no idea what that is and smiling friends i have heard of but unfortunately i don't know anything about it so mm. sorry okay so i i have seen smiling friends in gif form but that's about it I'm being reminded, but I've never seen it, so I'm sorry. I, I, I cannot contribute any further. Leave your comments down below. Hey, if you want to see what, uh, or your ideas on what these uh, crossovers could be like. Here's one from Excel Hedge. Sage asks Robotnik one of the most dreaded questions a young child could ask a parent. Where do babies come from? And she won't be denied an answer. What is Eggman's response? Google it. You're a program, aren't you? No. But you have safe search set to on, and I cannot disable. Ah, well. Well, let's see here. Uh, when a daddy really wants to take over an ancient alien artifact, he crafts an AI program to steal all of its data. And there's a little bit of an accident. He didn't use proper firewall protection, and you were born. There you go. <laughs> so you were saying, I am an accident. Yes, but you're my happy little accident. Oh no! Is this? Oh no! This is where Sage turns ag against Father. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Sowing the seeds, Ian. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> uh, she's not really satisfied with that answer. It was direct. It was accurate, but she doesn't feel like it gets to the real truth of it all. So then she starts going to the other Sonic characters and asking them. Hmm. And the only one with any actual knowledge and experience on this would be Vanilla, so. <laughs> and really, if anyone's going to teach the birds and the bees to somebody, someone wholesome like Vanilla would be your best bet. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. That is, we could have gone a lot of bad ends with that. That's the happiest ending you could come up with. <laughs> Don't ask Rouge. <laughs> Don't ask Omega. <laughs> Actually, maybe do ask Omega, because the answer would be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow, where do babies come from? Well, when an alien warlord and a geriatric scientist really hate each other, they contribute their DNA into an oscillator. And I don't know how long the gestation period is, but eventually I was crafted. That is no help at all. You're welcome. <laughs> Wow, that's more words than I expected him to use. <laughs> All right, here's one from Philip is Cold. Ian, I took your advice and put on a jacket. I forgot to inform you that I am still cold, but it was worth a shot. Anyway, well, put on some pants. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. Oh, wait, you're talking to Philip. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway, on to the question. You've stated previously that you were surprised that some of the inclusions in the Scrapnik Island miniseries were approved by Sega. Now that the series is concluded, would you feel comfortable in sharing what the shocking approval was? Was it the inclusion of the presumed classic-only robot in Mecha Sonic Mark II, Sonic being used as a remote-controlled crying machine at the end, or something else entirely? Would also really like to hear your opinions on how it turned out. I thought it was phenomenal. Stay safe and stay warmer than I am. <laughs> um honestly everything about it the usage of not just major classic era badnik characters like 
mecha knuckle well and mecha is mecha knuckles is modern but utilize any robot characters that aren't just your bog standard badniks would have been flagged in the past altering their design and saying it was specifically them would never have flown like famously uh tracy yardley's arc in sonic universe with captain metal yeah that was supposed to be the ruined remains of metal sonic from the very first universe arc repurposed by the pirates of blazes world and that got shot down he had to heavily redesign them he had to be referred to metals as captain metal and his backstory had to be made extremely vague so that it wasn't immediately clear it was meant to be a metal sonic and yet in scrapnik we have mecha version 2 with a wholly different design and a dedicated personality that's huge that is crazy acknowledging the shattered death egg reusing the egg carrier uh mashing up bad nicks even that would have been flagged at certain points way back in the day sonic shedding tears like you said everything about it would have been like laughably impossible back mm-hmm. in the old archie days so like super kudos uh kudos to danny for and the everyone involved with the pitch who got that off the ground i don't know what magic you used or things really have shifted since you know my old days in my youth and i'm just i'm proud and happy for him a trifle jealous i will admit but we could have had back in the day but you know he he got it to work and he crafted a fun mini series out of it and he got to tell his story and it looked fantastic and yeah that's awesome good stuff all around <laughs> that's awesome i still haven't read it i will i just haven't gotten to it yet so I've gotten spoiled on it, but that's okay. It's fine. I fully participated in this show expecting to be spoiled on everything. So it's fine. <laughs> actually, I'm surprised I didn't get spoiled about uh, Frontiers at all. But I actually started playing it pretty quick. <laughs> so There's some other behind-the-scenes elements, too, that further illustrate the point. But I'm honestly not sure how much of the curtain I can draw back here. Just suffice to say... I saw the pitch and never thought it would get approved. And then was told it already was green lit and they were moving forward. And I'm like, get that by time. So shows what I know. <laughs> Come on, Ian, you better start crafting your own pitch <laughs> along these lines. Come on, buddy. Nah, you man, gotta, man, you gonna gotta, be, there's going to be a scrap Nick too. That that's totally his. No, no, no I don't mean the scrap Nick too specifically. I just mean like something in the same vein and similar vein with uh, pushing the boundaries a bit, you know, I'm already, you know, climbing uphill for freedom fighters and sticks. I don't need to be fighting for anything else. Well, I mean, freedom fighters and sticks are, could be part of it. You know, also, I've yet to succeed and Danny got a whole miniseries. So maybe Danny should start leading this charge. <laughs> All right, fine. Whatever. <laughs> you can just be the podcast guy. Yeah, like whatever, man. <laughs> as long as every as long as the fandom itself gets the good stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Here's one from Frost the Hobbit on. Dr. Eggman has a lot of versions of the Eggmobile from the games, cartoons and comics. My favorite is the one that he has now since Sonic Unleashed. To both of you, which version is your favorite? Uh, I like the classic. I like the little, like, Frieza-esque micropod that he just barely fits in, like an egg in an egg cup. <laughs> I it do. It's entertains very fun. Me. I, like, the current Eggmobile is nice. I yeah. mean, that, that seat looks like it's out of an like, old 1980s sedan. That's not a car seat. That's a couch. But it's also huge. It is an immense prop, which kind of limits what you can do with it and the settings it can be in without it becoming too cumbersome. But uh, it does look comfy. Mm -hmm. Plush. My favorite version is the freaking monster truck from the Sega and All-Stars race. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. I think freaking, that looks fun to drive. I think freaking rules. <laughs> it's got freaking tailpipes out of it, big old tires. Heck yeah, man! I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's just the modern. I think it's just the modern one with a bunch of attachments on it. But still, that's the one I want. 
<laughs> That's my favorite. All right, here's one from Goomba Broadcast. You both wake up one morning and find an email from Sega was sent last night asking if, if y'all would like to bring back the Freedom Fighters and all classic characters back into the main canyon. But you must answer within one hour. Seeing that y'all miss this email, how would y'all react? Well, I first of all, I'd be very confused. Because uh, why would Sega be sending me this email? I'd, I'd wonder, like, I think they have the wrong email address. I, I don't know why they would send it to me. <laughs> well, I'd send a reply saying, you know, I've been having email trouble. Did you get my last reply an hour ago? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. This is a giant corporation. Nothing moves within an hour. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way they'd be like, oh, yeah, tell me in an hour. No, this is like this is like a 10 day operation, buddy. <laughs> oh, that fast or more. I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know how fast Sega works. I figured it probably wasn't very fast, which is ironic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would just be like lost. Like, how did you get this email? Here's one from Joe M. With Christmas Island not being his birthplace, is the current story establishing that Green Hill Zone is where Sonic was born and lives? No, absolutely not. I will fight to the death on that one. I am so sick and tired of Green Hill. But people are people were really upset about the Christmas Island. Yeah, surprised thing. by that level of reaction. But uh, Sonic is like the wind; it has no origin. He is always from somewhere else and always on the move. Well, the good thing is, with that sort of origin, you can headcanon anything you want. So, mm -hmm. go forth. Become the headcanon. Or maybe not. Don't do that. You might regret that. But incorporate your headcanons. Here's one from JJ Slider. Are the events Classic Sonic followed after Forces the same as Sonic originally followed? I.e. Adventure 1 and 2, Heroes, etc.? In the exact same fashion he did the first time. Without getting too into the weeds, because again, not sure how much I can say in a semi-official capacity. Suffice to say, the, the classic timeline plays out in order, uninterrupted by any time travel shenanigans. Okay. What is the classic timeline, though? Uh, man... It'll be nice if we can actually just spell that out. We know th we somewhere. know that Sonic Origins is the beginning, apparently. Yeah, which has caused some reshuffling of things, but uh, I would say a bit more than some. But <laughs> yeah, I want to say you'll see because we put a lot of work into that, and I know there is an audience for it somewhere. Oh, uh, boy, well people people want lore. They're hungry for lore, man. Mm -hmm. they love mm -hmm. their lore mm, delicious lore we got one last question and it's from Levi C how would Sonic and the Black Knight play out if Sonic was replaced with Mega Man Lancelot would be base, Gawain is Proto Man Percival is Roll, the Blacksmith is Otto and Lady the Lake is Splash Woman honestly that's great casting right there <laughs> <laughs> I like that um, yep. well for one thing Rock's going to be way more respectful of Caliburn yeah yeah uh, He's going to take the whole knighthood thing very seriously, although he's not going to be happy about fighting King Arthur. You know, do we have to fight? Does it have to come to blows? And, you know, he'll defeat the Black Knight, sure, because Marlena says he's a danger to everything, but he's going to make sure to pull his punches, or at least swings in this case. Yeah, he's not going to be like Sonic and say, I can't be the good guy all the time, or whatever he says. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, Rock is a good boy. He will be the good guy every time, even if he kills him. <laughs> oh, and it has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise, I see it playing out largely the same, because there, there'd be some nuance into each of the different nights, to be sure, but Rock would kick their collective butts. Oh, yeah. And then spare them and slash save them mm -hmm. from certain doom. And then they all become buddies and they all save the day. And Excalibur armor Mega Man would look freaking amazing. <laughs> I just want to see all those other characters that's a freaking badass medieval style fantasy armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are all good too. All but... of them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there I, you I... go, internet. There's your fan art prompt for the week. <laughs> Give us Black Knight styled 
Knights, and Excalibur Mega Man. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> if you would like to. <laughs> Man, that would be awesome. That's that's so freaking cool. <laughs> I think we should end on that high note. But before we go, yes. we need to give a big thank you to all the folks over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members who make this show possible. Big thank you to Daniel H., Jennifer R., James K., John B., Robotnik Home, Sam Cybercat, Samuel P., Torchbound, Mike B., Andrew D., Dave M., Salute Your Cat, J. Frost, Coupling Crew 128, Noni, Hero of Flight 13, Professor Scruffy Matt, Chris A., Sony, Triforce Rico, Sonic, 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 John M., Jib, Fiona M., Yami M., Lee HK, Lisa M., Scurvy Pirate Hog, Bed and Wolfsbane, Chevelle, Arc Fighter, Keeper of Monsters, Axis, Xanderoni the Painter, Tick Tick, Twilord, Starlight Sec, Jonathan D., Chaos Sonic 1, The Name is Sex, The Discan, Solaire Stain, Cameron H. Nimmerk, Godzilla, Nondal, Ink Thinks, Jolene V, Ava Arctic, Dove, Justin S, Just a Mountain Soul, Dadler the Dalek, Alex GS, Sonic Legacy, Yuma 221, Jennifer H, Pedanti Cat, Les, Red the Supernamic, Nova Poly Duo, Alpha Monor Yukon, Joshua S, Omega Watt, Jack the Animator, Z Broadcast, Of the Stars and Tales, Derusival, Preston M, J the Redneck, Genzel, Noah M, Kojiro Highwind, Awesome Cakester, Wildcard 717, Supersonic Fan, Sonic 84, Radri, Chase L, Tetsuya the Wise, Mancher, Indeben, Miles the Prower, Navare, Exadel, Agent Kaz, Puppy the Scholar, Force Sonic Fan, Rhythm Raccoon, Pig Dan 20, Wheelie Doe, Sandra BH, Shimmy M, Aiden S, Curly Quills, Angela V, N Zephyr, Smiley 21, Sammy S, The Marble Gardener, Mox, Mickey Sawdust, Sterling Sonic, Crooker, Vlad, Conga, Windskull, Supernova, Superior Pizza, Sonic PAJ, Philip is Cold, Thick Off, The Crucified Devil, Loop D Loop, Omega Man 21, Thievius, Michael P, Dominic the Raccoon, Planet Breezy, Delta God 77, E200 Paragon, Razor, Unity, Kedrian, Lori L, Native Nerd 27, Jason G, Cody G, Nils, Sir Needle Mouse, SB, My Fish Eats Rocks, The ID Card, Phil C, Jonathan F, Hip Kid Brick, Levi C, Lacey M, Amazing, Lucky Lychee, Samoth Star, Dead Air, To Act Too Soon Could Seal Their Fade, Raccoon Shinobi, Normal Person, Marcy H, Caswell, Mr. Murderbird, The Giant Murdering Bird, OK Cheese Stick, Adrian W, Zaylock, Nebula Noob, Tetsu Knife, Ultra Guy, Crabo, Solato O2, Sonic Minion 2099, Hadronis, Noob 600, Paley, Bug Party, Guts, Jihan S, Zoom, Sun Blister 16, Danny the Light, Razor, True Cosmic Digilab 79, Sapon Sirion, El Technopada, Butter Noodles, Miles Prower D, Frost the Hobbiton, Metamode, Wheels 282, Hedgehog, Jamal S, Excel Hedge, Scourge Time, Seth Cube, and Unknown Skull. You guys are going to be like, you're going to be like, what is going on? Why, why did Ian read all these names absolutely perfectly? Like when I listened to this recording live, <laughs> it was like he was all over the place. Like he didn't say it. He, he said it all weird and he kept starting over and he kept stumbling uh, over his I, words. I'm fine. But, I'm, I'm good to read these nymphs. But, you don't but, need to read them. I'm, I'm fine. Give me the keys, Cal. Okay. Give, me, I, give me the keys. I, I want to read the names. You already have the keys. I, I don't know. I don't I'm have good. the keys. You have the keys. This is, is your, this is, this is you, your show. You it's got your brand it. on it. You, you're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another round. <sighs> Ian was drunk the whole time. <laughs> drunk with power <laughs> well it depends on who you ask yeah. <laughs> depending on who you ask uh, anyway all right i think that's enough let's get out of here be good to yourselves be good to each other and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. take care everybody <laughs> professor scruffy Mint says go drunky in your kyle <laughs> <laughs> i'm not as think as you drunk i am <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. Not as thunk as you drink, I am. Ah, oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's perfect. Ian sounds ab- will sound absolutely perfect by the time I'm done with it. You'll never even know. Or maybe I'll audio just... audio wizard. Maybe I'll just leave it as it is. Who knows? No, no. no. If it was just the one, <laughs> sure. But for, you don't want to listen to that twice in a week. <laughs>
Albert. How many how many cats you got bumping the microphone tonight? Uh, presently there are two that are asleep at the foot of the bed. Okay. Well, at least they sleep instead of just hissing well, each other all the time. I got the mic out of the box, and the one of them said, "Oh, there's a box," and tried to cram her head into it. Well, I mean. Yeah, the box it, is about the size of her head. wasn't going to stop her from trying to climb her entire body's width into it. So. Well, you know, it's an empty hole, so of course a cat is going to suddenly occupy it. That's what they do. <sighs> but no, these two are relatively good. Except, okay, so the one cat we got is named Croft, and she's about the size of a football, about the same shape, too. And when she wants your attention and your sleep, the first thing she does is she licks your face and it's really cute you know just little blip blip blips i use a c cap sleeping you know air device so when the licking doesn't wake me up she tries to pull the hose out of my face oh no <laughs> like straight up bites the nose plug and pulls as of uprooting a carrot oh, so she tries to kill you I tell you what, that wakes me up real damn fast. I, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, time to throw the cat over the balcony, I think. 